The Nazca lines are a collection of long straight lines and giant geometric figures and geoglyphs, designs or motifs etched into the ground located in the Peruvian coastal plain, about 250 miles or 400 kilometers south of Lima, Peru. Nobody knows for sure when the lines were created. The Nazca lines can only be fully appreciated when viewed from the air given their massive size. Despite being studied for over 80 years, the geoglyphs, which were designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994, are still a mystery to researchers. What are the Nazca lines? There are three basic types of Nazca lines, straight lines, geometric designs and pictorial representations. There are more than 800 straight lines on the coastal plain, uh, some of which are 30 miles long. Additionally, there are over 300 geometric designs which include basic shapes such as triangles, rectangles and trapezoids as well as spirals, arrows, zigzags and wavy lines. The Nazca lines are perhaps best known for the representations of animals, some of which measure up to 1200 feet long. In this video the focus will be on the figure known as the monkey. From head to tail it measures 80 meters or 86 yards. Let's take a closer look at the figure's morphological traits. Morphology is a branch of biology dealing with the study of the form and structure of organisms and their specific structural features. This includes aspects of the outward appearance such as shape, structure, color, pattern and size. First we can see that it has feet on the back limbs and prehensile hands on the front limbs. That means the ability to grasp. It appears to have five digits on one hand and four on the other, plus three toes on each foot. We can also see that it has outward bent elbows on the front limbs. This would suggest it has a clavicle. Without a clavicle, the arm motion is restricted to forward and backward movement only. From the two observations above, we can deduce that it is most likely a primate. The third observation we can make is that it has a curved tail in the shape of a spiral. It is my view that the creators of this figure intended to show a prehensile tail. A prehensile tail is the tail of an animal that has adapted to grasp or hold objects. Fully prehensile tails can be used to hold and manipulate objects and in particular to aid arboreal creatures in finding and eating food in the trees. If the tail cannot be used for this, it is considered only partially prehensile. Just such tails are often used to anchor an animal's body to dangle from a branch or as an aid for climbing. So which primates have fully prehensile tails? Many new uh, world monkeys in the family Atelidae, which includes howler monkeys, spider monkeys and woolly monkeys, have grasping tails often with a bare tactile pad. This is in contrast with their distant old world monkeys, cousins who do not have prehensile tails. When we compare the image of the howler monkey to the Nazca figure, we can see that the howler monkey looks much bigger than the Nazca figure. When we compare the woolly monkey to the Nazca figure, we can see that the body also looks bigger than the Nazca figure. When we compare the spider monkey to the Nazca figure, we can see it is the most similar to the Nazca figure of the three groups of monkeys mentioned. So let's take a closer look at the spider monkeys. Spider monkeys are new world monkeys belonging to the genus Ateles. Like other Atelines, they are found in tropical forests in Central and South America, from southern Mexico to Brazil. The genus contains seven species all of which are under threat. The black-headed spider monkey and brown uh, spider monkey are critically endangered. They are also notable for their ability to easily bred in captivity. Uh, these proportionally long limbs and long prehensile tails make them one of the largest New World monkeys and give rise to their common name, 
Spider monkeys live in the upper layers of the rainforest and forage in the high canopy from 25 to 30 meters or 82 to 98 feet. They primarily eat fruits but will also occasionally consume leaves, flowers and insects. Due to their large size, spider monkeys require large tracts of moist evergreen forest and prefer undisturbed primary rainforest. They are social animals and live in bands of up to 35 indivi individuals but will split up to forage during the day. Recent meta-analysis on primate cognition studies indicated spider monkeys are among the most intelligent New World monkeys. They can produce a wide range of sounds and will bark when threatened. Other vocalizations include a whinny similar to a horse and prolonged screams. They are an important food source due to their large size, so are widely hunted by local human populations. They are also threatened by habitat destruction due to logging and land clearing. Spider monkeys are susceptible to malaria and are used in laboratory studies of the disease. The population trend for spider monkeys is decreasing. The IUCN red list lists one species as vulnerable, four species as endangered and two species as critically endangered. Unlike virtually every other primate, spider monkeys have no thumbs, which could snag on the branches. Instead, their four long fingers form a perfect hook to help them swing on branches. When we look at the hands of the Nazca figure, we can see that on each hand it is depicted with one finger much shorter than the other fingers. It looks to me that this shorter finger is meant to illustrate a thumb. We can see that the hands of the Nazca figure are different from the hands of the spider monkey. We can also see that the hand to the right appears to have five fingers, while the hand to the left have four. I have no good guess why it is created like that. There is another monkey I have not mentioned yet that could also be the monkey depicted in the figure. The reason I have not mentioned it together with the other three monkeys is because it is not listed as one of the monkeys with a fully prehensile tail. The name of this monkey is Capuchin. This monkey has a partially prehensile tail. The Capuchin is more than uh, intelligent enough to make full use of its prehensile tail but since the tail lacks an area of bare skin for a good grip, it is only used in climbing and dangling. Other reasons for partial prehensility might include the lack of strength or flexi flexibility in the tail, or simply having no need to manipulate objects with it. When we compare it to the Nazca figure, they do look similar. The Capuchin monkeys are new world monkeys of the subfamily uh, Sebinae, they are readily identified as the organ grinder monkey and have been used in many movies and television shows. The range of capuchin monkeys includes some tropical forests in Central America and South America as far south as northern Argentina. Capuchins prefer environments that give them access to shelter and easy food, such as low-lying forests, mountain forest and rainforest. They are particularly abundant in Argentina, Brazil, Costa Rica, Honduras, Paraguay and Peru. The capuchin is considered to be among, if not the most intelligent new world monkey and is often used in laboratories. The tufted monkey is especially noted for its long-term tool usage. One of the few examples of primate tool use uh, other than by apes. Upon seeing macaws eating palm nuts, cracking them open with their beaks, this monkey will select a few of the ripest fruits, nip off the tip of the fruit and drink down the juice, then seemingly, seemingly discard the rest of the fruit with the nut inside. When these discarded fruits have uh, hardened and become slightly brittle, the capuchin will gather them up again and take them to a large flat boulder where they have previously gathered a few river stones from 
up to a mile away. They will then use these stones, some of them weighing as much as the monkeys, to crack open the fruit to get out the nut inside. Young capuchins will watch this process to learn from the older, more experienced adults, but it takes them eight years to master this. The learning behavior of capuchins has been demonstrated to be directly linked to a reward rather than curiosity. In 2005, experiments were conducted on the ability of capuchins to use money. After several months of training, the monkeys began exhibiting behaviors considered to reflect understanding of the concept of a medium of exchange that were previously believed to be restricted to humans. They showed the same propensity to avoid perceived losses demonstrated by human subjects and investors. During the mosquito season, they crush millipeds and rub the result on their backs. This acts as a natural insect repellent. When presented with a reflection, capuchin monkeys react in a way that indicates an intermediate state between seeing the mirror as another individual and recognizing the image as self. Most animals react to seeing the reflection as if encountering another individual they do not recognize. An experiment with capuchins show that they react to a reflection as a strange phenomenon, but not as if seeing a strange capuchin. So to sum up, the tail of the Nazca figure seemed to depict a prehensile tail, so I have narrowed it down to four monkeys. Howler monkey, woolly monkey, spider monkeys and capuchins. The body of the howler monkey and the woolly monkey looked too big compared to the Nazca figure. The spider monkey was really the one that I found most similar. It has a very long and fully prehensile tail, much longer than the capuchin. The only problem I saw was the lack of thumbs on the arms. The body of the capuchin is similar to that of the Nazca figure and it has thumbs but the tail is only partially prehensile and much shorter than the spider monkey. I decided to contact a group more no uh, with more knowledge about monkeys and ask their opinion. I sent an email to Field Projects International. This is a non-profit organization dedicated to the study and conservation of tropical ecosystems. They conduct wildlife research and provide field training in tropical biology and conservation genomics. They were kind enough to reply to my email and this is the answer I got from them. Quote, we looked at the Nazca monkey images and it is very hard to say. The very long prehensive tail does make me think of spider monkeys who also have much longer tails than capuchins. In addition, the number of digits is all over the place. It is true that spider monkeys have reduced vestigial thumbs or none at all, but the image we looked at appeared to have five digits on one hand and four on the other plus three toes. The tail position is a little odd for cap capuchin as well. Both capuchins and spider monkeys typically curl their tail downwards away from the direction of the head. But spider monkeys more often raise their tail if they are walking quadruply. It was a bit hard for me to tell if the monkeys was meant to be walking or hanging. Actually, but that too might be a clue. Capuchins and howlers more often, but not always, walk along branches, while spiders frequently engage in suspensory uh, feeding and locomotion. In the end, we thought maybe it was more of a stylized representation of a general monkey. One of us even thought it was a fanciful squirrel monkey. Personal, personally, my first instinct was spider monkey, but maybe that is because I have a particular fondness for them. However, I have seen them spiral their tails like this, to a much lesser extent of course, and in the opposite direction. 
I am sorry, this is not much help for answering your question definitively. Uh, I wish you good luck. End quote. All the four monkeys tend to walk with the tail curved away from the head, opposite of that of the Nazca monkey. In this picture, we see a spider monkey hanging from a branch. The tail is curving towards the head like we see in the Nazca figure. I am in, no, I'm not in any way a monkey expert, but from the images I have observed, it seems like the tail is only curving upwards towards the head when the monkey is hanging from a branch. So I am assuming that the Nazca figure is depicting a monkey hanging down by the tail. There could, however, be another reason for the tail curving upwards. From the scrotum area of the drawing, we can see a straight line pointing out. This could be an illustration meant to show the figure scent marking with urine. We can find a similar line pointing out from the scrotum area of another Nazca mammal figure known as the dog. I will discuss this figure more in detail in another video. It is difficult coming to a conclusion about which monkey is depicted in the Nazca Plateau. What I can say for sure is this, whether the figure is depicting a howler monkey, woolly monkey, spider monkey, capuchin monkey or if it's a stylized representation of a general monkey. No monkeys live in the Nazca area. They are all native to the forest. The closest forest is 250 kilometers away. The Nazca culture that is credited with creating the lines was a coastal culture that existed in and controlled a small region around Nazca. So a few question arises. How did a coastal culture controlling a small region know the anatomy of an animal living in the rainforest more than 250 kilometers away from Nazca? There could have been people from this culture visiting other cultures higher up in the Andes and so doing could have witnessed uh, the monkeys. But this does not answer the second question. The second question that arises is why would a coastal culture choose to create a figure of this animal that existed far away from their culture? Most people living in that culture would never have seen any of the monkeys men mentioned in this, this video in their natural habitat. So it did not have any influence in their day-to-day -day life. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And please leave a comment on which monkey you think the figure represents or if you think it's a stylized general depiction of a monkey.